Are we ready to start? I think we're ready <laughs> to start. Hang out. Right, this is it, isn't it? It's, it's episode 10, uh, season 1. This is the... this. Uh, I need to bring up the old HBO stuff. The HBO guides still have Oh yeah, I want out. to see what that looks like now. Yeah, what does oh, yeah. the... Uh, the character guide has got to be got all, updates. all mm. updated with... Uh, Oh. Who's deceased now and who's not? Or who's more yeah. deceased? Well, we have lost. Come on, load in. Uh, Luceris? Yes. And he has been updated as deceased. So. Okay, so he definitely did die. Rest in peace. During that. Sweet pieces. summer child. Sweet summer child. Rest in peace. <laughs> so. so he, he survived. He He's living his life as a simple fisherman now he, he lost his memory he has amnesia no, he's, he's alive inside the dragon's stomach <laughs> he's just sitting there he walked out at the last minute and will be raised by a red priestess mm. <laughs> no but that's so, that's a conspiracy the theory people theory. have really yeah. it's mentioned in fire and blood that luke survived and lost his memory yeah all the fan theories the delightful mm -hmm. sweet fan theories <laughs> It's because the because we we want our nice characters to live like like they like it seems particularly in House of the Dragon that like all the people that you kind of want to live die right mm -hmm. like the two good strongs now now Lyceris, um, Lainor Lainor lived mm -hmm. Rhea Royce she she seemed pretty cool yeah well I suppose it's you know this this is setting up a tragic conflict I am assuming so you've got to have the like you've got to build the likables so that mm. they can be tragically killed. I think the only person who I kind of felt all right about dying was was maybe Vaymond, but I don't think Vaymond was like a bad dude. I think he was just, for want of a better expression, trying his luck. It's just ambitious. He's yeah. just outspoken and ambitious. He and, was, you know, I think yeah. from his perspective, he was like, I must speak the truth. Like this is my <laughs> honor to like. This is how like. You know, I'm not like my mm. my my family be degraded by bastards. Like, yeah, you know, like it wasn't it, it, like yeah. it wasn't. He didn't do anything monstrous. Um, no. So you know, I, I he spoke I, the I, truth. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's one I mean, thing going for it, isn't it? I mean, technically, Ramir is not a whore. Like, she wasn't paid for her promiscuous nature, but. Um, no, but you would be technically true. I mean, if, it, yeah, I mean, if she was not yeah. loyal to your nephew, you you can probably kind of see a bit of anger there, right? Do you know what I mean? Like he thinks his family's kind of getting played. Um, he probably feels somewhat laughed at uh, for for like letting this stand. So. Hmm. I would, I would put, I, I don't know, I chalk that down to, to being relatively neutral, maybe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Understandable, you know, I can, I can kind of see. I, you know, I maybe mean, I do the same thing. It was foolish to say in front of Damon, in front of the court, because, you know, he must have known Damon would just do what he did. Yeah. We've also got lots of new kids listed on the uh, character guide now, too. Including we the do. one that died in this episode. But we oh, also yeah. have... Another kid listed between right. We have Darren Targaryen, who doesn't have a picture yet. Yeah. So that that's uh, yeah, Alicent's youngest. So he he's um he's been on the bloodstream uh, as in the the opening credits um oh, for a, a quite some time, um but he's not been introduced. But um all of the behind the scenes people say he will turn up. Basically, he's been um fostered at Old Town. Yeah, um, Darren. Right. Yeah. And then we have and then a lot of people with the same name again. <laughs> I know. The other kids. Know. <laughs> Get is, ready. This is, this is I mean, I love that I love that George R. R. Martin breaks a lot of rules. Uh you know, like in Game of Thrones he, he famously broke the rule of just having too many important characters right like he, and he didn't just break the rule a little bit like he just threw it out the window. Right? <laughs> and and it was like it was a well known thing that everyone like with Game of Thrones, is like, like no one knew who anyone was because there were just so many people, right? The only people, the only people who knew who each people was was either book readers who have had a lot longer to acclimatize the material, or absolute like weirdo nerds such as us, right? Like it's just mm -hmm. no, normal people don't don't get that, and 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 they break the rules here by having so many characters 
with like with the same very name. similar names like it's just like you yeah. can't like for the sake of storytelling anyone with a modicum of sense would have like easily recognizable names that might in some way there might be a very vague linking in of, of onomat appear a little bit do you know what i mean like something to help remind you um who's who no. and who's related <laughs> yeah like the, mm. it's yeah it's... definitely the a first guy. time i watched game of thrones i think it took me uh three attempts to watch it because the first time i watched it i was like nope this is not pg <laughs> I do not sex and violence, no. Um, and then I was like, but it, it seems really compelling. Uh, and everyone told me it was good, so I'll try again. And then the third attempt, I got through the series and then I read the books. And I'm so glad I did because I think if I read the books without having had some vague association of the characters um, from the series, I think I would have struggled. Because I, 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 like, dyslexia brain anyway, I've already got name blindness. Yeah, it's so much universe building in your head to be able to, like, read those books mm. and then try to picture all that stuff that happens. Although I'll say one thing that does help a lot for me, I, I don't know if anyone else feels the same way about this, the maps help. Like, if I've got a map and I know where stuff is and where stuff's going on, like, that that yeah. tends to yeah, make things really make nice. sense, which is a little bit why maybe I don't click in quite as well as House of the Dragon because there are fewer places. And the places that we do see are kind of like feel kind of similar like driftmark and dragonstone feel a little bit similar mm -hmm. and mm. you know they're a bit like they're all coastal. Yeah, yeah 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 sailory you know <laughs> this is just another <laughs> we got to see some of the map in this episode mm. with that like part where they lit all the candles which shows the map right well, yes. I mean, it's funny that, like, with, with a smart guy like Tyrion around, Daenerys didn't manage to, like, activate that feature. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Stannis uh, never figured it out either. No. And he had a fire priestess about with him. You'd think she'd just be, like, kicking off fires. Yeah, everywhere. exactly. So, mm. <laughs> I still think that, like, it would be kind of neat, but I doubt I doubt they do this, but it would be kind of neat if, if, if some point, maybe through this show, uh, they 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 got rid of the edit like they made they got rid of the extra swords right like like there was like a plot linking in a plot reason why uh why it goes from one aesthetic to the other the two the two iron thrones in the two series if you know what i mean because mm. yeah. in the book of course it doesn't i think they're gonna thing. address it i think it's gonna happen you you reckon they'll just like tidy it up a bit yeah, I, I think probably like the fact that Alicent has already like adjusted the throne room mm. um, to like add more of the the stuff of the seven. I wouldn't put it past her to be like, oh, just tidy this up, just tidy this up in the. I mean, yeah, like yeah. I don't want to be missed. You know, I don't want to be that health and safety guy, but like, you know, and you'd free up. There'd be so much more room for activities if you got rid of all those swords. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, there, I think there might be a slight continuity error. I need to rewatch the wedding sequence. Um, the wedding episode, because I feel like the wedding episode, they put the, like, um, like, it was set in the Great Hall, and they put, like, the main, uh, like, banquet table for the, the royal party right in front of where the throne would be, which, yeah, what about all the swords that were poking out on that, like, like, that raised plinth? Like, mm. like, it was one of those things I kind of vaguely noticed at the time, but now we're discussing it, I'm like... Was that a continuity error, or was the depth perception off? Or, or uh, this is a weird. Uh, I don't. I could be very wrong on this one. Other, other, other swords. Like, can you can you put them away when when you want to lay <laughs> a table, and then you bring them back out? Are they like little um, on little bases or something where it's just like it's like one of those fields that you can convert between like a soccer field and football field. Exactly. Or, yeah. You know. Or do they have it under the floor and they just swing it up from the floor and it's hanging upside down underneath? <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe all the swords are from Ikea and they're all just flat packed. Mm, exactly, yeah. And there's probably like some sort of string or toggle that just flips them up. Um, yeah, I, sounds, it, sounds accurate. Those Targaryens, like they're very progressive mm. on their, their, their practicality. Yeah, and, uh -huh. and, and, and like... I mean, I I get that like if this ends up just be <clears throat> if this ends up just being a show thing, that's fine. You know, like I, I'm it's, it's it's all fine to have you know stuff that's like just for the just for the show, especially when it is a visual sort of storytelling type thing. 
the you know like it be, like I'd be totally happy with it if it, as as maybe something like Alison would do because that sounds like something you know someone of the faith might do right someone who's a bit like you know balls deep in it might sort of put away some of the swords because you probably don't want maybe you don't even want that aesthetic because you know there, there are like plot, like plot reasons like for example if Alison and Aegon and Otto Hightower want to give the appearance that they are the peaceful ones, they might start, like, putting away some of these swords, if you know what I mean. They might, like, start, like, you know, cleaning up their image, as it were. Less conqueror, more, you know, peacemaker type of thing. I mean, like... Otto said in the episode that, you know, they are they are fully, fully aware of all the symbology of mm. legitimacy. Um, I wouldn't put it past them if, if their political messaging is... Because at, at the moment, their political messaging is quite aggressive. It's the Conqueror's yeah. Crown with the Conqueror's Sword with um, all of that jazz, while Rhaenyra's is a little bit less aggressive. It's the the, the crown mm. that was her father's and her grandfather's. Um, but otherwise, her political messaging hasn't really... Um, uh, she she hasn't called her banners, but I think mm. that's the hint of the end of the episode. So I think her political messaging might become very aggressive and mm. uh, uh i think probably alison's given given the fact that they technically have started this conflict um by causing the the death of Lucerus, i think alison's response might be oh shit uh peace 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 we we totally didn't do it we're totally like we're, we're the good mm. calm ones holy moly so when um, when Lucerus died right i thought immediately that's like you you know from like almost from damon's point of view where it's like because mm -hmm. he's he's he thinks that they killed viserys right like he he says that that was almost like his instinctual um accusation it's like they killed him uh which obviously like i mean it's not like he was a you know a spry chipper or anything like that like he was on death's door at the best you know like but anyway, so Damon's like, ha at least at the very least, has some strong suspicions that they killed Viserys. And then suddenly Lucerys turns up dead as well. And it's like, I, I bet Damon's going to interpret that as a foregone conclusion that they're just on the outright offensive and they don't care who gets in the way. Whereas from Alicent's point of view, um, I don't know how, like, with so, you know, how much good faith you want to take on board with that, but it's like, She's lost her husband, and of course, Lucerus dies in an accident. It's like, I don't know. Um, it still yeah, definitely well, seems. Definitely, yeah, one one I is mean, much it, worse than the other. It well, highlights the um, like again the the discrepancy that Alison had with her small council in that she was like, "We need to super peace. We need to super peace. We need to end this peacefully." And her all of her council was like, "War, war, 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 war." Um, and I think Damon is very much in the same boat as the the Green Small Council. Um, mm, and I think yeah. Rhaenyra even says that, like everyone around that table is, um, you know, pushing for war. And the only one who's not pushing for war is Rhaenyra until, you know, the first th stone is thrown. Um, yeah. So, like, I think Damon very much like, um, I think, again, uh, Rhaenys, Rhaenys is just... The, the quote at the beginning, which was like, all of these boys, they're green and, um, you know, they've got fists of steel and balls of seed and they just want to war <laughs> because they're green. Um, I think that that's, that plays true for everyone on either side of the council except for the queens until they are provoked um, and provoked through miscommunication and pro provoked through yeah. um, tragedy. Um, so it feels very, you know, Greek tragedy. And, you know, if, if Rhaenyra and um, Alicent could have talked, if, um, you know, if the dragons hadn't, like, it is just like a cascade of tragedy. Um, mm. Particularly this, like, obviously we've seen Alicent was grieving the whole way through the last episode because of the death of her husband. And then we've got mm. Rhaenyra grieving the whole of this episode because of the death of her daughter. Um, like, and the death of her father um yeah so yeah. It, the the different like tragedies where they're both women in power who are trying desperately to hold them to peace despite their own personal strife and if they could just communicate if only iphones were a thing and communication like, is key counselors yeah well, they, it's, also, like, it's like the dragons are the ones that lit the spark for the war too i mean yeah they did ride them out there 
and Eamon but, did decide to, like, pursue and poke the bear with the stick even more. But ultimately, they both lost control of their dragons. Like, I was going to say, um, on, on regarding the losing control of dragons, um, do you think it's the dragons didn't listen, or that the dragons, like, like they were reacting instinctually to the circumstance, or, you know, or do you think maybe, the, the kids are yeah. just not very good dragon riders? It like, could be what, that. What's your theories? It, it could it could be that. I mean, I, they were flying through a thunderstorm. I can't imagine that being very, mm. very good in terms of the balance of power. Like, the fact that, like, that is how it started, and then it was, like, all sunny and clear and fine up top, but the dragons I, wouldn't have changed their mood that fast, you know? <laughs> like, I... I, th- I... It was Jaceris' dragon that struck first, too, wasn't it? Yeah, so I, I need to rewatch the scene Arroyo? for a couple of reasons, because I feel mm. like... Um, one thing I want to track, given, again, Chris is kind of, I, I don't necessarily agree, but it's an interesting theory about the use of language to control the dragons. Because I don't know at what point, like, I need to I need to go through it with subtitles um, and track when they did and didn't use Valerian. Because it seemed like instinctually when the kids were panicking, they, did. they stopped using Valerian, they started using Common. Yeah, they, because um, so it because... could be miscommunication with the dragons, or it could be my other theory is like instinctually, like like so, Amond was just there to be like bullying him basically. Like I got the mm-hmm. you, you know you you gave me a pig years ago. You made me feel small. Guess who's the big powerful one now? Ha ha ha! Bully, bully, bully. Um, and is that your uh, that... is that how bullies work to you? Is it Jenny? Go ha ha! Yeah, bully, bully, bully. 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 <laughs> bully 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 <laughs> I'm so tired um, um, but yeah so um, he wanted to just basically have fun at the expense of Luceris not anything to do with like actually hurting him maybe taking his eye but definitely not killing him but if you make a dragon who is at least on some level a instinctual beast feel cornered it's going to potentially snap and that's I think what happened where he the, the dragon, you yeah. know, blasted some fire mm. at a much more aggressive large mm. dragon, and then instinctually, the large aggressive dragon was like, "Ah, oh, I'm like oh, no. an ancient yeah. gra- gra- dragon. What the f? Of the course, first, I'm gonna nom." The first time I think that they didn't speak in the language was when Lucerus yelled "No" at Arax, and that was where the first fire blast happened. I'm pretty sure because before that, Aemon was speaking in it, but he was yelling like. For Luceris, because the subject said like boy, and then like where did you go? It's, mm. uh, yeah. Going, going on the debate of how much of it is, um, like how much of it is independent dragon instinct, how much of it is poor Valyrian, and how much of it is a psychic link. Is there was an interesting thing with when Rhaenyra was having her messy, horrifying birth. Um, they kept showing flashes of Cyrax. Oh yeah, they did. Like right. Cyrax. Like 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 shots of Cyrus's face and like growling and that sort of thing while Rhaenyra was in pain. So to me, that read as confirmation of some level of a psychic link between dragon yeah. and rider. Yeah. That's so it. that would also suggest that if the boys actually had intention to cause harm, whether or like subconsciously, like if Aemon subconsciously actually want Lucerys is Lucerys dead, and the dragons are actually able to read those primal motivations regardless of language. Then, like, it's just taking into account mm. that instinctually, that's actually what Aemond wanted was to kill him. Mm. I don't yeah, know. I mean, uh, it, it's the first time we've had an implication yeah. that there is a like a, a real like meaningful visual implication that there is a psychic connection between dragons and their riders. Um, mm, just I, from that shot, I, I think it's like. And I, I think this might be something to say more towards how magic is done in House of the Dragon versus how it might be done in Game of Thrones. I, I my, my, so there's this sort of like maxim in Ga- Game of Thrones where it's like dragons bring about magic or they are a symptom of magic in the world, right? So when dragons are about, mm. other magic is is a bit more alive as well. Um, mm. But we don't see any magic I think in House of the Dragon, right? No visual, actual magic, right? Am I? Am I? Um, when Rhaenyra left the castle with Damon to have their flirty, sexy times, 
Mm. Um, there was like a guy doing fire magic, and there was a lady who was like, "Do you want your? Do you know your future of your death, child?" Um, and that was just on the streets. So I think there is an implication. There is. No, no, well, yeah, but not, no, no. Is it? Have, have we seen? Yeah, but those those are parlor. Tr- well, those are at least assumed to be parlor tricks, right? Parlor tricks. We we haven't seen any black candles. We haven't seen any warlock type things we, we, ha- we seen... haven't you know we haven't seen any uh, melisandre seen any green or shadow babies or fire priestesses no. it's all so been it's more implied person to person related like yeah it's been more like about the dragons and the people less than it's in- the magic. invisible right so because it, it to me it seems very much implied but not explicit that laris can walk into the rats right mm. because of how they 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 cut from one to the other how one things are in the background all that kind of stuff but it seems to me that the show wants to keep this very much suggestive so that, you know al- almost a sense of plausible deniability in this kind of thing and i kind of feel like it's the same there with dragons and the psychic connection it's like there may or may not be a psychic connection but um it's it's implied not explicit and the implication of it the suggestion of it the unconfirmed nature of it is the kind of the tease right that's that's the important part right Mm -hmm. it's it's supposed to be that people uh, are so in tune with their dragons that you might think there's a psychic connection but the thing is i think this is where it kind of where they might sort of cleverly shuffle about that ruse a little is is with the dragon fight at the end right so obviously between um uh, damon and lucia not damon uh Eamon and Lucerus, right? They have a reasonably complex history of of power dynamics and revenge and all that kind of stuff that quite possibly could just be lost on a dragon. And that dragons they don't really unnecessarily understand the concept of 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 of, of a relationship that complex or even care to know or whatever. And so, uh, whereas was Eamon thinks that he's got the hubris that he can he can uh manipulate his dragon that much maybe the dragon just just takes it as a attack rather than a um soft one you know know, as a a a tease or a bully or a you know and and it's just just, yeah it's not intellectual it just senses the energy Mm, that it senses and and it probably senses his his angry energy his primal force and then if the dragon matches that i mean in any Mm. relationship right one one side can have the upper hand in terms of the energy power and that's that's the idea that like maybe in in Eamon's anger, the dragon also gets that energy, and then yeah. because it's more experienced than he is, maybe it takes that upper hand in the energy, and then he can't. It's it's in control of the dance, and like because he fed it that energy, he can't do anything about it. He can't control it, especially if yeah. he's controlling it using words instead of feelings, which which is probably the main way it's controlled. Less like you know, language. in the same way, if like if you're, I, I, I've never owned a dog, but when 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 you're, I imagine if you're training a dog, like you're, like there is a certain amount of the animal you're connecting with, reading your experience, reading your body language, like you know, yeah, like I've tense. got my, my my friend who's got a sad, like if you get home sad, her p- puppy will come and just sit on her, um, mm-hmm. like even if like right. the, wouldn't necessarily say anything different or anything like that, but would just come and sit on her. Um, right, so I feel like there, there maybe... will be that instinctual connection, regardless of if it's a mm-hmm. fully magically psychic or just that instinctual relationship to read body language and intention. Mm-hmm. But it's also not a person. In the same way a dog isn't a person, too. Mm. Yeah, like, they're, the same, they're like intelligent, people, but they right. are bestial. Right, exactly. But it's also like there are some people that, like, when they walk their dog... If they don't even know that they're giving off very nervous and like tense energy, it's also reflected in the dog that they're walking, and they may not even realize that the way that they're modeling is also being reflected in their dog. Yeah. That same way might be true of the dragons, like because they're not people, um, they have a they have like a connection, but the action of the animal might also reflect right the inner state of the person, even if the person is unaware of what their state even is if they're not aware yeah. of paying attention yeah for sure yeah, that's um, that's how i read it yeah yeah, uh, yeah. ultra chiff sex's live stream commented on um kind of the um 
unintentional cascade of negative emotions. So mm-hmm. the parents have created an unnecessarily like an unintentional cascade of emotions out of the kids that even at the point at the dinner party where they were willing to resolve their issues, their kids were not. And then the kids, whether willing or not, have chosen to like have cascaded their emotions onto their dragons. And it's kind of an upwards cascade in terms of power. It's, it's like, you know, you're, if, if, if you are causing unintentional fallout, but your fallout is, you know, two giant fire-breathing lizards, um, it's a recipe for tragedy. Mm. Yeah, it's, and it's also like, I don't know, I kind of, I kind of get it that it's like a, a cat playing with a mouse, like the dragon's gigantic. And that yeah. dragon's oh, tiny. God, yeah, and I it's like, like the... so easy for the power dynamic to switch in the direction of the dragon. That's massive, you know? Like, it really mm. was just a nom, that what's death. The, like, I wasn't mean, it... what's... Yeah, what's mm. the difference what? between them? I don't even know, like... It was I, I think there are size charts. Obviously, one of them's older than the other one, you know? Mm. Right? A hundred yeah, years. The, I mean, the, the obviously, they were trying to, like, the, the, almost like a lot of the point of, of what we were, were shown on screen was to illustrate dragon dragons are not equal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and because I I loved the 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 direction of scale in in this episode to be honest like they did a lot of it for obvious reasons because they're setting up all the battle stuff and then the, they're demonstrating that you know this this one's big this one's tiny by comparison right especially the difference between the ones that are um the the, the ones that are cradle old versus yeah and versus yeah, cradle hats versus inherited yeah. And I, like, I, I love the fact that the way they shot it was very um, kaiju. Like, it gave me, like, King Kong, um, <laughs> yeah. like, Godzilla vibes. Mm. Like, that level of just yeah. sheer size of frame. Yeah, um, yeah, I was getting Godzilla vibes when... He, when, um, uh, when uh, the shadow in the clouds. Yeah, the shadow in the clouds. And also as... Um, uh, is it Luc- Luceris was uh, going into Dragon uh, Storm's End? Yeah, that that shot was oh beautiful. It was it was amazing, and I got to think though, right? Because they they do talk about how much they spent on this this season. I like that that was a great shot, but it didn't look like it would have cost that much money because it was very like silhouette-y and perspective-y, yeah. and it's like. I gotta be honest. Thinking about the last ten episodes now, which fair play have actually been ten proper episodes. They they haven't like slimmed it down or anything. Um, and it is the longest episode of Game of Thrones outright, or not the longest season. Uh, the episodes were the longest, and and there was ten of them. Uh, but the thing is, um, it doesn't feel like they spent more on it than season eight of Game of Thrones. But they did, hmm. and it's like. That's kind of strange. Like, am I am I wondering where the uh, man, money has gone? Like, am I am I like failing to appreciate? You know, there were some shots that looked really good. Like, there were some like sweeping, what you might think of as drone shots going across Dragonstone that I thought were absolutely beautiful. But um, was that was that it? You know, is that is that the kind of the, are those the kind of scenes that are costing the big bucks? Maybe they spent it on the cast. I mean, you're supposed to take into account that this was probably shot... When, when was this shot? Was this shot during COVID? I think if, a l- it, lot of it was, yeah. Yeah, because if we do take into account production costs during yeah. a pandemic, like the, the, like, the amount of coverage they would have had for, like, the well-being of their cast and crew, like, that, that could have been a factor. Um, yeah. But you do have these, you know, they, they have built some more large and intricate sets um which are practical like a, a lot of the armor i think is mm-hmm. really like like there are there are quite a few really interesting details as well as the dragon budget because even in like the last season of game of thrones daenerys had her dragons on screen not that much and they've really cut down the dialogues well this has got mm. to have at least a dragon scene quite a large dragon scene or plus more than one dragon scene per episode um um, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell you where the budget is because I can't see the breakdown of it. But I, I can, I, I, it, it's, I would say it's at least equal. I can understand why it's at least equal. Um, and I couldn't say specifically why it would be greater. Mm. I, it's just something that sort of like ticked at me. It's like, well, I was expecting at least one, one, one big 
big battle. Well, yeah, because um, even was the Stepstones it? I guess. Maybe? I guess. Yeah, I guess that was the most battle that we saw out of all first season. Was that Stepstones battle? Yeah. I mean, the dragon was like igniting people on the cliff edges, but you didn't really get any dragons fighting one another except for mm. I think this last episode. Really. Yeah. Mm. I mean, to be fair, though, I mean, the first Game of Thrones season didn't have a big battle in it, but, uh, but, 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 and I, it's hard to say whether or not it suffered for it or not, because you, you're only ever looking at it in the context of the full show, right? So this, this yeah. is like season one of Game of Thrones, really. It's like the whole first season is the prequel, mm-hmm. which kind of makes sense why they were so quick to, to uh, confirm a season two. They just wanted to know that the potential viewership was there. They might even understand yeah, so yeah. much that um, this might not even be the best season. This might not be the one that's most popular, because I because the first season of Game of Thrones, most people picked up Game of Thrones are a couple of seasons in. Yeah, I think that was when it really had its take off as well. Yeah, because um, it had to do so much setting up because the world was so complex. Like I will say for this show, because Game of Thrones did so much of the groundwork, even even though there. Like that, like they had didn't need to do nearly as half as much chunky exposition as Game of Thrones season one had to do, in terms of like like they, they had to specify who like they have to make it really clear whose whose family is whose, but like they never explain who the hand of the king is like simple things like that which are, you know, for us second nature because we watched the first Game of Thrones series so they don't need to explain who the hand of the king is who the council is, right. um, you know those sort of things, um, so I think. The writing, I think, is stronger than season one, but I think it could still hit a stride in season two when it's not got so much jumping. Sorry, do you say when you say do you say the the writing in House of the Dragon season one is better than Game of Thrones season one? Yeah, yeah. I no, I totally agree yeah. with that in terms of like sheer quality. I there was some dialogue in season one, which was which was quite Rough. expositiony, isn't it? Like you know, yeah. Every, and I think that like, they they could they can only get away with this series having a more deep, concentrated story because of the groundwork that was done in Game of Thrones. I think, you know, yeah. if if they didn't have Game of Thrones, they'd be explaining who Targaryens are and why they have dragons, and they were explaining yeah. like who the Hand of the King is, and they'd be, you know, mm. um, the 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 religion of the Seven. Like to us, we know exactly what mm. that is. We know who the Maesters are. Um, well, in Game of Thrones, they kind of had to build that in or expose it. Yeah. Yes, I. Al- although to be fair, they do that in Game of Thrones over a very long, like, uh, like episode one and the first couple of episodes. Like the the dialogue really does st- stretch and distort a, a fair bit because of the mm-hmm. exposition they have to get across. But like the the Faith of the Seven is is like rolled out over a long period of time, but. What I like about House of the Dragon is they 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 set everything up so that it's a bit of a show don't tell. Like they don't explain the small council not nearly as much as they do in Game of Thrones, but they kind of don't need to because it sort of explains itself in a very natural way. I feel I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, I feel one, like just but... overall the writing is. I feel like just. It's more dense and interesting and complex, and the subtext, like the subtext that they, like things like the um, conversations that Tywin would have, where he's playing, like like when you get Tywin and Elena T- um, Tyrell in the same room, and they're having a conversation about one thing, while the entire there's an t- entire other conversation uh, regarding the subtext of the scene happening at exactly the same time. Mm. Like I feel like that was the whole of the series the whole way through. Uh, there is yeah. so much that, that there's not a scene that isn't playing at least two strings. I, I um, mean, the some of uh, Rainey's uh, dialogue is particularly well when it comes to that kind of layering. Oh, she's brilliant. She has, yeah. Uh, Ra- yeah. Rainey's has got powerhouse of a character. Mm, very interesting. Uh, and her, yeah, her dialogue is particularly yeah quite well well written. Um, I the I mean to be fair, the the only I mean, any complaints I've got the show are, are going to be incredibly minor, but they're also going to be things that they've left, like they haven't done. I think in terms of what they, ha- I don't, I don't think they've done very much badly. But mm-hmm. I, th- I think in reality, the, the only thing I would say 
it was missing was any kind of like levity and humor i need some levity yeah i think i think the closest we have to levity which is probably the reason why rhymera uh rainies is one of those characters that just like sings is you know she she kind of has like even at her most serious she has an air about her like there was a shot in this episode where um uh damon is being sassy and Ray Mira sends them all out, and you, there's just this filler shot of Rainey's kind of smiling to herself, being like, "Oh, yeah. here she goes, a queen who's got a husband who wants to do his own thing. Will she? Will she be able to put him down? Hmm. Um, like just that knowing look on her face was. And there, there was a scene in I think it was episode three where um, Viserys makes the trip to Driftmark to uh, propose the marriage to. Uh, between uh, Rhaemyra and um, uh, I've forgotten his name Corlys. Uh, Corlys's son um, oh, and oh, Rhaenys uh, uh, Rhaenys uh, uh, just kind of Lainor, um and Rhaenys just kind of floats in and she's wearing like a baggy shirt and she's like cousin lovely and she's kind of got like this kind of like really truly self aware air about her more than a lot of the other characters because cause she was kind of I think like she is a wisdom that none of the other characters have because she was not chosen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, well, yeah, like, of, she... like she, she, she doesn't really have like obviously her family's in the game, but she doesn't really have a like money on the game. She, she's just there to kind of spectate and give wisdom, and so sometimes she just has that look about her of like, yeah, you go, Rainies. You've got, you've got like the wisdom of understanding beyond all of the other characters in the show. Well, she, she is. Uh, maybe one of the older characters. Uh, mm-hmm. She, although I don't know how much older than Damon she is, but um, but I, she's also quite far removed, even from Damon, her nearest Targaryen relative. Uh, oh yeah. So I think, and and like, given that the the uh, the. the, the you know the 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 grand council at the, the beginning mm-hmm. i think she's just all out of fucks to give really yeah you know and i, I think love she, it yeah she's she's kind of like she's got she got she's got a bit of wisdom and she's got she hasn't really got much to lose like she she seems not hugely unhappy with with corliss like she seems to be quite happy as a, as a valerian have, right in comparison to the other romance like um marriages in the show i think corliss and rain Rainies probably have the healthiest mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because even if we're going back to Viserys and Emma, like he didn't really listen to her and she didn't really, you know, mm. push her wants. Um, and then we have uh, obviously Helena and uh, Aegon are terrible for each other. He's awful and she's a sweet bean who deserves mm. better. Mm. Um, and then you have obviously Alicent and Viserys, which was not a healthy relationship. Yes, there was there's some joy to be had from it in that she did care for him for many, many years and clearly cared for him, if not uh, in a romantic, loving way. Um, but other than that, I can't think of any other marriage. Well, I suppose um, uh, Rhaemyra and... Um, uh, oh, gosh. Uh, well, like, obviously in this episode, it really highlights that Rhaemyra and Damon, their relationship is not. Yeah. Great. Um, like I feel like uh, Ray- Rhaenyra and um, Lainor's relationship Lainor, yeah. was probably the closest to actual happiness, and he was clearly deeply depressed and very unhappy, and they weren't able to have successful sex. Um, and she had to seek comfort elsewhere. So, in terms of a working relationship, probably theirs was the best. But in terms good of good colleagues, yeah, yeah, they, they were great. She was a fantastic beard for him. I, um, yeah, I, 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 th- I mean, in this episode in particular, we we got a, a pretty firm demonstration of how Rainey's, uh is listened to in her relationship as well. Like, even though you know you've got a highly patriarchal society, um, you know, as as sort of the the, the obviously weaves itself throughout the entire storyline, uh, and Corliss is part of that patriarchy, and he, mm-hmm. I'm sure. I feel very much sees himself as the 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 father slash head of the household type of thing. He still talks to Rainey's as an equal and still seems to like respect her intelligence with you know wisdom and opinion. Um, yeah. I feel like she she can mutual. speak her mind to him in a way that mm. not necessarily all others um, 
like other women in their patriarchal relationships can necessarily do. Yeah. Like she she doesn't have to do like you know with um Rhaenyra and Lainor at one point she had to invoke like I am the royal heir you must do what I say. And mm. I don't think Rhaenys like Rhaenys doesn't have that power but she doesn't need it. Mm. Yeah. So it's I uh, yeah I I started off being a bit prickly about her uh in the earlier stuff uh in the earlier episodes but I I've really warmed up to her now because she kind of sees the bullshit for what it is, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. she's fantastic, and she's she's yeah. always done it. It's just she's been a, too minor to really pay attention to. But I feel like, like the best, probably like it's, it's just again another tragedy on this Greek tragedy that probably is the story is that if if she had been queen, she'd actually been allowed to be queen. What a different world would it have been? Mm. Yeah, but that level of wins, wisdom, insight, intelligence, down to earth, common sense, and a flipping dragon that's cool and badass. What a well, different world yes. it would have been. But like, it's the, it's the um, path not Alicent trodden. is right. Yeah, like, Alison is right. Like, Viserys should have become a country lord who, you know, lived his life and he shouldn't have been king. Rhaenys should should have been queen. Um, it's yeah, the path not trodden. grass is always greener, but... Yeah, we don't we don't know if, if it sh you know, Rhaenys has spent uh, a substantial number of years, like, learning from Viserys' mistakes, right? And also, to be fair mm -hmm. to Viserys, uh, like he, he generally kept the realm in a s reasonably steady state. Like I don't think he was a bad. I think like when him and uh, Lionel talk about you know rev give a bit of a, a review of his reign, like something that's relatively uneventful and stable, it is good. Like mm -hmm. the best kings probably aren't remembered because they just keep things ticking over. Like the best king is a bit like the best IT person. Is like it's best yeah. if they just like don't interfere in your you know, like the less you know about them, the less the less prominent they are, the better, you know? Maintainer of stability, yeah. You don't mm. you, it yeah. goes over well, but you don't get remembered because people remember disasters. <laughs> people remember disasters, people remember uh, war. What, what was know. the what was the Viserys the title they gave him as funeral was Viserys the Peaceful? That's the one, yeah. Yep. Like you yeah. know, he 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 was adequate. Although, um, interestingly, in this episode there was that interaction between Lucerus and um, Rhaenyra at the beginning, um, and he said, "You were always perfect," which is clearly you know oh. the blind spot of a child. Um, yep. Uh, but you know, her saying, "I was I was really scared," and then my father taught me how to be a ruler, and I, that threw off alarm bells in my head because I'm like. Did Viserys really teach Rhaenyra how to be a ruler? Mm. Like, we haven't seen a single scene in the whole of the period where she is a child where he actually talks about politics to her and talks about, like, how things are meant to work other than the duty based on her gender in terms of marrying and the line of succession and the prophecy. Like, we never actually have had a single scene of him actually training her to be a ruler the 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 progression is she went from a cupbearer yeah. to a member of the council um but he as far as i can tell he never actually taught her anything so i think she might be looking a bit rose tinted at her childhood well i i, I was to take that the cup bearing um, was like, was her I, training I also, is cut is cup bearing not a substitute for education now <laughs> well, modern thinking I mean, I'll be interested because obviously her perspective when she was a teenager was, ugh, I'm just a cupbearer, he never listens to what I say, any suggestions I do he ignores or he sends me off to do this or he sends me off to do that. Um, how much of that was active, like um, passive teaching and how much of that was inactive, like how much of that was just happenstance by happenstance of her being in the same room, she happened to learn how politics work. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Again, we just never had a scene where he actually is teaching her how to be a good politician. So I don't know how much of that is, again, like roast into glasses for her, or it, it could be, but like his his politics weren't great. It's very clear that he let the rest of the council kind of run it while he was <laughs> off planning the next thing or being very, very ill. Um, so like, I'll be interested <laughs> to see how her political stylings are. Um, or it's kind of sad because I wish we could have seen more of her political stylings before she goes into wrath mode. Because I've got yeah. the feeling season two is just going to be anger. 
um, yeah. and not too much political sparks. While I feel like she could have been politically interesting, or it would have been good to see whether she could be politically interesting, given that Viserys wasn't politically interesting, or pl- politically interested, at the very least. Mm. Um, yeah, just just a food for thought, as mm-hmm. I often do, om, or om, food om. for large dragon. Hom nom 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 hom. Um, yeah, um, I I do have to think that I I thought it was actually quite kind of adorable during the the war councils uh, that um, uh, the the uh, the Targar the uh, so Bela Targaryen Reina Targaryen w- went up with um, Jacarys and Lucerys. like like they're like yeah. I, I, there was like, they did that in a kind of a, like, like a, they're cool. yeah, like a, it's, yeah, it's courtly, courtly dating, courtly dating, they, yeah. they seem, they seem happy in each other's company, mm. um, which is, is, is nice to see in relationships, is people happy in, in people's company, because we mm. have had a couple of, like, I think part of the reason why people were surprised with the Damon Raymira interaction in this episode is most of the interactions we've had since they've been married have been quite, Courtly and happy and contented, mm-hmm. um, and then obviously uh, Damon does not know how to handle grief. I think it's possibly mm. the understatement of right. his character. He, he can't do a moat. He only does rage. Yeah. Well, he he that that would be because he's a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> like he has killed a uh, wife before. Like let's let's not mm-hmm. pretend this guy isn't. Yeah. Let's not pretend pretty guy. easily. Pretty easily killed. It isn't what pretty he easily is. Killed right? her. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like it, again, depending on where he goes in season two, I think he could be a really good example as the trope of the guy that people think is redeemable, but is just and always will be an abuser, uh, or like at least well, a toxic, a violent man. Yes. Uh, yeah, a toxic, <laughs> violent person. <laughs> Um, like, because, you know, we kept on seeing moments where he, in like, just a few scenes where he is really, like, sweet and kind to Romira, and we're like, oh, maybe, maybe she has redeemed him, which is a dangerous trope. Oh, yeah. And a dangerous thought process. She fixed him, he's fine. She fixed him, he's fine, and then clearly is not the case. Yeah, unless um, you can unmurder wives, you can't fix him, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you put, put, put them back together, just stitch together the, 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 the skull. Nothing about um, necromancy. That's what the Silent Sisters are for. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, yeah. I, I Call a red priestess. Call I, I did wife. read. I did read an amusing uh, headline, which is uh, uh, "House of Dragon showrunners don't know why people like Damon so much." <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. we keep, we keep, we keep trying to uh, every episode. We keep trying to, uh, to 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 demonstrate what a bad guy he is. Uh, in, in this episode, he murders his wife. In this episode, he cuts a man's head off. Uh, like, well, they're know, not. He, they're in love with. They're in love with half of him. <laughs> yes, he, he, yeah. I mean, we've seen him cut off a number of body parts in this series. Like. Well, people will see what they want to see, you know? They yeah. can just block that part out. Your favourite neighbourhood dismemberer. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, like... Your, your local... Like, cool, your local dismemberer. Dismember. Reasonable like, prices, okay. half off. <laughs> you know how, like, with the Lannisters, Tyrion was, like, the redeeming Lannister? Mm. Well, Damon is, like, the unredeeming... Um, uh, black as it were you know person from the the black side right like mm-hmm. well, I think, he, I think he's, he's like they they how good they like, sorry we both yeah. started buffering there go ahead jenny <laughs> you go you go it's fine uh it, it's just like on yeah on the on the black side like they have everyone seems relatively kind of cool except for damon whereas like with the lannisters and in, in in game of thrones everyone seemed kind of a bit evil except for Tyrion. yeah mm. i mean I think that there's a certain level of a um, when you've got a actor who's loving it as much as Matt Smith is, um, like there is a level of natural charisma that comes with the character. B, I think that's a credit to the writing that they have. Like he has motivated reasons for being the shit he is. Like the, the like that's what, how you get great villains is having motivated villainous actions so yeah. he's motivated by the fact that he wants his brother to pay him attention and he's motivated by the fact that he uh feels 
constantly overshadowed by other people and now I think probably one of the things that we would probably see coming to next season I would not be shocked is he feels overshadowed by the fact that his wife is the actual heir yep. um, well he is not and I think that's already starting to come into play like she is the destined prophecy heir um, and his brother never even told him about this prophecy that apparently was something that he was obsessed with right um, so I, I think that jealousy and that envy is going to really play a part. Um, and I think possibly part of his, um, a, a tiny bit of perhaps his motivation in this episode is the fact that like, Ramira clearly goes through something deeply, deeply traumatic in the loss of her father and her child and is then back on her feet and doing the business and telling him what to do. Um, well, like, like he can see that that's an incredible feat of, power and it's genuinely impressive and i think he's a bit envious that he isn't coping as well um i think it's down to you know when when you're having an emotional time you don't necessarily see that other people are suffering in the same way you are um and i think damon because he is self-absorbed he doesn't necessarily see the truth of the grieving situation that Remo is going through in the same way that he is going through the grieving situation. I don't know. I feel like that there's some, some disconnect in that. Um, but my, my third point on why Damon mm. seems more likable than he is, is because he embodies a lot of the toxic masculine traits, which are prized in this universe. Like he is a warrior who is ruthless and, powerful he has a powerful dragon he had mm -hmm. like in 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 the lore of this universe like we keep on going well you know he was in an unhappy marriage and he's got to produce heirs and his wife was clearly a bit of a bitch yeah we can let that like you know you can almost imagine the other cat like his is his gold cloak sitting around the table but like oh mm. your wife is uh, uglier than sheep um like you he embodies a lot of the things that this world's culture Covered. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, yeah. Um, he, 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 there's a lot of like if he was less evening. competent at doing what he does, then there would be a lot less sympathy for him. I think if he was the equivalent of like, like the the I think a shadow character to compare him to would be um uh what's he called Theon Theon Greyjoy. So Theon Greyjoy mm -hmm. has issues. He likes violence. He likes sex. He has a lot of the things that he prizes but he's not competent. He can't cut off a head. He doesn't have a powerful sword. He doesn't, like, he's not able to commit to his depravity and we see him as kind of pathetic and kind of a bit meh. Um, and then obviously he gets more depressing as we go. But I feel like because Damon is deeply competent at what he wants to do and he's driven, mm. I'd say he's a high charisma character. He knows what he wants and he goes for it. So and he's that the successful seems to be a commendable Theon. trace. Yeah. Yeah, in a way, yeah. like he, he he embodies a lot. Of, like Theon, like he he is what Theon would want to be perceived as, and Theon yeah. is not that competent. I feel it, it's not a perfect comparison, but that's kind of what I'm trying to explain. No, I get you. I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. It's like the poster child ego. Like he's just <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Good image and the power and yeah, he's entry. It's what makes him an interesting villain. Honestly, he's competent. Yeah, and, and I, he I feel like villain. Like for example, if he were to have a Jamie type arc where he were to lose his hand or his ability to fight or his ability to ride a dragon or something like that, I think that would shatter him yeah. from an emotional standpoint because he would lose one of the primary things that makes him feel competent and powerful. Um, and unlike Jamie, where we then root for him more because he's having this progression, I think we'd root for him less because I think if Damon was... God knows what Dame would do if something took his power hold from him. Well, that's kind of yeah. interesting because you know there was this um, theory about Game of Thrones that Tyrion would lose his tongue because Jamie lost his mm -hmm. hand and Theon lost his Johnson. Uh, you know, like there was this running theme of... And of Cersei how, lost her beauty and her kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and like that loss was obviously a, a theme that ran through through Game of Thrones. And I, right. sus and some people even go so far as to suspect that there were people that they were planning to 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 cut out Tyrion's tongue if not if he wasn't such a entertaining on screen presence for other people. Mm -hmm. But that was just fan talk, so you know. 
Uh, but well, there's also a lot of suggestions in the book that that might happen. I think Ultra Felix has done a whole video on how mm. Tyrion could potentially end, and I think he said something like he counted the number of times a character, like he's had the threat of having his tongue cut out. Mm. I think it's in the mid twenties in the books, wow. like twenty times has someone threatened to cut out <laughs> Tyrion's tongue, um, and it would be a fitting thing for him. Yeah, yeah, it would match him. So, so in in light of that possible theme, and I don't expect we'll see this happen in in the House of the Dragon, but as what what would Damon's equivalent of that be? Because I think a lot it would of be it his is dragon. Nah, I think I I mean Damon's dragon is not his uh, personality, right? But well, it, I mean, it's, it's like it, it's a representation of his Valyrian heritage, which I think is powerful to him. I, don't, I think he cares more about his prestige as a dragon knight than he would yeah. as, like, Rhaenyra's husband. I think if she were to die, he would grieve, but it wouldn't be something that would fundamentally mess with his character. I feel like losing his dragon would lose a chunk of his personal identity. Like, not or a sword. His... Black sister. Maybe. Maybe losing the sword? Um, I don't know. Maybe like because I I think his his I think go you know going back to what you say like in, in in this world of a particular type of toxic masculinity, he he excels at and that's like I suppose a, a more characterful trait right so you know like I don't know his brain really isn't it like he's quite <laughs> like I don't know. Smart's not like the right word to use because a lot of it comes from character and charisma and social manipulation. Yeah, I'd say, as, I'd, I'd right. say charisma. I, I don't yeah. know what what would happen to lose that for him. I don't know. Maybe I think he. I, I think he'd have to lose his whole. I, I I'll be interested to see what he, I, I can't think of. A, I can't think of a perfect a answer. Uh, I think like as long as he's like. I think he'd have to lose quite a few significant things, not just one. Like, I think he'd have to lose his dragon. I think he'd have to lose his sword. Um, I think, to actually, one of the things I think would have would like seriously take him down a notch would be if he got a similar illness to Viserys. Yeah, he wouldn't be like, able I think to do anything. Physical aggregation. Oh, okay. Like, oh, leprosy or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, something that lost his ability to be a proactive individual because so much of it, his, his, his drive is his natural id his, to be well, constantly Chris moving, constantly yeah. doing things. Um, yeah, so that's and I what think he values it, the most probably. Yeah. I think if something like... took away his ability to be active, mm. I think that would, that would maybe be his thing. Bingo. Hey, like, nice. What Good most, what would he be there we most, go. Most ashamed about happening to him, or mm. feel the most shame about. Is, 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 where is he the most fragile? But yeah, that sounds like if you took that yeah. away, mm. humiliated um, him, he'd be even more angry, do something yeah. crazy, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd be scared of the initial reaction in the same way I'm quite scared of um, uh, Rainier's um, initial reaction to the news. Like, like I am. I am psyched for season two because it's going to be fire and bloody. She's gonna oh, do yes. Um, We're going to have to I, wait I'm, a little bit, I'm, though. Yeah. So uh, speaking about people that have lost body parts, I'm going to be straight up. I think <laughs> the Emerald Eye is goofy as heck. Yeah, I mean... I, 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 it, it doesn't... I think it's, it's not... one of those things that in the books could be really cool. Um, but well, for, first really of all, the one thing I don't get about it is... It, why have a emerald eye if you're going to put an eye patch on it, right? Eye patch or emerald, right? Pick. Yeah, like, right? like if, like, <laughs> you want people to see it. It's going to be so fancy, right? Why do you put an eye patch? On? Yeah, is it supposed so, to intimidate? It's, it's, I guess, or it, we yeah, we have I, no I prior backstory to if this emerald has any kind of benefit or anything like that. That's true. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's not entirely it outside of his personality, um, because um, because Amon's. Um, like he he is kind of that like peculiar sort of well, I, he's, he's got like a teenager right? hipster vibes yeah, yeah. like he, teenage he, he, hipster he, he, bit goth kind of you know he like, wants people to be like dang boy you cool he would if he, he would be that kid in school that wears the long leather coat right like it looks like he should have yeah. like a bow or something <laughs> with a long leather coat <laughs> yeah or like walks with a cane and a top hat like that that type of <laughs> like just, just wants people to look at him, but then can't 
quite pull it off sometimes. Yeah, yeah, like he's got that smart awkwardness. And if that's by design, then because he is, how old is he now? Like 17 or something? Yeah, mid-teens, 18, late teens. 19. Like he, yeah, like that's kind of, that kind of makes sense. You know, like that's that's kind of the age. You're still, you're still working out the final points of, of who you are at, at that age. So I, I you know, that's that's kind of, understandable starting, if starting to care about the signals you send out to other people with what you wear and how they perceive i mean possibly to the point where you overthink it right so yeah like Fitting yeah in. and and like the emerald has been something he's been chewing over in his head for forever and then other people just think it's yeah, i don't know i kind of felt like it was yeah. a bit weird <laughs> did he say why he picked it at all he didn't really say much i can't yeah remember. I, th- I, don't think he did. I think it, he it's like... just a cool visual thing where he, he says something about like making it a gift to somebody it's a sapphire, it's a sapphire I'm, yeah. I'm not sure if what significance it might have i think it just thinks it looks badass so he uses it for a cool reveal well it's i mean it gives him something to have on the little chart at the beginning right <laughs> yep. i'm sure people wouldn't want to look at an empty eye socket you know? Well, that's why he's got the eye patch, yeah. isn't it? Right, like, got, yeah, I think eye patch or sapphire. I think it would have been cool if, like, instead of him revealing it mid scene, it could have been a thing like maybe Viserys didn't like him doing something like that, and because Viserys mm. is wearing a mask, maybe he wore an eye patch. And so, if we started the scene in in Storm's End with him not wear, like, if his reveal to the scene was him wear, like, without the eye patch, wearing with the blue eye. Yeah. Then that could be in a my dad's dead. I now like dress how I want, mum. Um, like I'm cool. Look how cool yeah. I am with my eye. Like, but I, I revealed to camera. No more. Well, okay, they revealed, revealed it. Cam- revealed it. It was part yeah, of the it, scene, right? That was the purpose. Part, of it. Exactly. Like if it was a revealed to camera in a separate scene, uh, as as like what Jenny just explained, it would make a little bit again a little bit more sense. But the fact that in the middle of the the hall in Storm's End, he just pulled it yeah. off and go Dana, like uh, well, it's maybe, a little maybe anime. It was meant, you know, it was meant yeah. to like add to the whole little beginning confrontation. Yeah, sorry, I mean Max? The, the what Max? I said it was very anime. Yeah. 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 I think the the only logical reason I can think of it for being in this scene, which is not a perfect solution, I still think it's a bit cheesy, is it's an intimidation technique and it's a rem- like a really yeah. obvious reminder for yeah. Lucerus of like before I cut out his eye, I'll show him what he did. That I it, want it's your not eye a perfect now. solution. Yeah, yeah I, I want, want your, your eye. Eye. Um, eye for an eye. Like that that sort of thing. It'd be a gift. I think he said it'd be a gift for his mother. So maybe his mother gifted him the blue eye. Um, I don't know. I just I feel like like they could have made it like a, like a, a cool character moment in that like um, like maybe like Aegon um, always like like never liked like maybe um, Alison never liked the blue eyed but Aegon does. So now Aemon's like Aegon's king. I can do what I like. Or maybe Viserys never liked it, but now Viserys is dead. He can do what he likes. Like you could have had a moment like that where it's like a um um I can do what I want. I'm cool. Um, yeah, but that's I'm, not how they presented it in the show. They presented it in a nod to camera way, which is fine. It's it's maybe, not maybe quite... it was supposed to express some of his insecurity about it. Like he still feels real bad about losing mm. the eye. Yeah. And... Well, it could be going back to Game of Thrones season one, like you know, wearing your your insecurities as armor. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I've lost an eye, which I'm insecure about. But you know what? I can put a cool gem in it, and then I'm super cool. Um, mm-hmm. But it doesn't feel like he's insecure about his eye as such. I feel like of his insecurities, that's not necessarily one that he's that peeved about. Like, probably I think there not. Are other I mean, he's had he's insecure about. He's more. He's probably more ticked off that like it's gone fundamentally unpunished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. R- rather than you know, like he he's he's probably reconciled the I've lost and I gained a dragon. Gained a second largest dragon so uh he's not he's he yeah like and, and he's had Isn't many it the years largest to... dra- dragon yeah is it's the, dragon? the largest living dragon oh well, yeah. there we go it is i yeah. think so... i think valerian was bigger but valerian's been dead for, uh, okay. um, so 20 the, uh, years. 
there you go right like i mean and he's had what like 10 years or whatever to reconcile it so yeah, he should be securing himself by now <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe he's not i mean <laughs> maybe it was like stick. maybe it's a gift from alicent which made him insecure or maybe it's something like that or maybe like yeah. Amond, a- a- aegon gifted to him and then he's like oh i thought i was over this but maybe i'm not because my brother's saying it looks gross I don't know. There, there could have been a cool emotional reason for it, and it said it just felt like a nod to, and, and a wink to the camera. Um, pun intended, because it's an eyeball. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah it, it, it felt a bit smoke to the camera more than uh, a cool moment, but mm. who knows? Yeah. I'll be interested. To see, so, um, question for you guys. So, um, they've talked in the books about how it's like, um, it's all about like, uh different perspectives and how there's no like the truth of the matter is something that is you know gossiped about and there is like no tangible evidence as to how this dragon battle went down except for uh what we have been presented with in the show so um the people on storm's ed don't know exactly what happened other than luceris is dead um aemond knows what happens do you think aemond is going to say Oh shit! It was an accident. Crap! 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 Oh my god! I didn't mean to. To his mother and his brother, or is he going to be like, uh, he totally insulted my honor, so I totally killed him because I'm totally a badass. I'm like a badass dragon. Mm. Like, do you, how do you think he's going to play that off? Oh, uh, I, th- I think I. The, the, so obviously, you can interpret his expression after it all happened. You can sort of, um, you can, you can, you can, you can interpret Eamon's facial expression in a number of ways I don't think he felt guilt uh, he definitely I, had the, an oh shit face on he had an oh shit face because I think that oh shit face is oh shit I've just started a war yeah yeah, yeah. exactly that's, that's uh, the thing so I I suspect but again I'm only just sort of going with my gut on this one like, that he's going to be he, like oh, oh shit oh shit oh shit that was an accident and then I think yeah. Alison will be like, "They'll never believe you. You've got a, you've got a, yeah, we're fucked." Yeah, you think he feels like any shame for yeah. what he did at all? <laughs> uh, only uh, in so far as that he feels maybe a little bit embarrassed that he lost control of his dra- or he didn't have full control of his. You know, like like yeah, he's only like, looking yeah. at it in, in how it interprets on him. He has no, um, I, he has no guilt but, because yeah, he's he doesn't. Raised... He doesn't care that Lucerus is dead. He does. He does care that it it, it may affect his standing as a dragon rider it may affect yeah and also yeah also like yeah, so yeah he's no worried empathy. about the fallout, there's no empathy right? in that situation at all <laughs> yeah it's well, all he's been he's raised to about consider he's been raised to fundamentally i mean consider luceris and jacaris and joffrey as enemies really yeah um rivals if not full-blown enemies so yeah i i yeah he yeah so he's not gonna and i don't think alice you know it's not like Al- alison's only gonna also care in terms of how it will affect the political situation itself yeah yeah and, and, and... well in, in in terms of um parallels forward and back as well we, we've talked a lot about how damon and Amond are quite similar both in dress and kind of edgelord vibes um and how viserys wasn't suited to be king um and aegon uh, a yeah aegon isn't suited to be king um, and there was a scene where Aegon came back, uh, where Damon came back from the Stepstones and presented the crab eaters, um, mm-hmm. axe and everything. And they, Viserys and he briefly reconciled. Um, and Viserys was talking about like anecdote about like her, your mum. I, I will take no doubts on this. Um, our mum definitely loved you more. You were definitely her favourite, hundred um, percent. And I feel like if we are drawing parallels, Aegon. Is definitely not um, Alicent's favorite. Aemond is definitely her favorite. Maybe Helena, but in terms of sons, mm-hmm. Alicent's favorite is definitely Aemond. Yes. So yeah. I'll be interested to see whether or not the "oh fuck, you just started a war" comes into her perspective on her sons because yeah. Aegon is a shit. But he hasn't actually done anything to start a war yet. Oh, is she gonna play? Fa- is she gonna switch to a new favorite? Yeah. I don't know because I, I, like she desperately pities Helena and she desperately wants to Helena to be happy. Um, right. But between the boys, she's definitely showed a favor 
over Aegon. So um, which, I just, uh, in, in terms of parallels between the mother and the two Targaryen uh, boys, hmm. you can definitely draw that connection. That's an interesting thought, especially which one's more. Consider- which one's going to bring her more shame? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Well, because well, now a, a, a Mond is a kinslayer. Yeah. So that, that's significant. Oof. Like, he's, he's, you know, mm. he's not a rapist, but he is a kinslayer by the, under the rule of the seven, he has cr- committed a unthinkable act and also started a war. Maybe Whether that's, accident, maybe that's his reason for blaming it on the dragon, possibly, and saying mm. it was an accident. So that and also, she uh, stays in favor with Allison. Yeah, given that that Aegon might possibly warm up to being king, right? We saw him warm up to it in the, in the dragon pit where he is crowned. But if he warms up to it a bit more, then it might win Alicent's favor, and then you know, yeah, you know. So yeah, it could be, could be, it could be like you know, and especially considering like Alicent is also kind of horrible. You know, she over, oh, she overlooks yeah. some pretty very self involved, very in very yeah, yeah, like she very unself aware. Yeah, no empathy, yeah. little empathy. Right. So mm. it Lots does it feel flying around? Does it feel also? By the way, just to, just want to point out on the episode, Jenny totally called it that it would be all greens last week, all blacks this week. Yep, I yeah, also called decide. problems with the uh, pregnancy, and I also called. Um, uh, when Aemon said, I will feed you to my dragon. Yep. Mm. So, um, yeah, well done. You, you, get, you, you, you uh, yeah. <laughs> good, good a, observations. A small snack for the largest dragon. Yeah. <laughs> it's not enough to, nom, to nom, quench nom. hunger at all. I mean, clearly, clearly she wasn't that hungry because she dropped most of it. She's a real sloppy eater. Well, it's yeah, wings, just, isn't it? Wing, wings is messy and not much meat. Yeah, I know, probably a bit bony. Yeah, yeah well, she definitely it's just, got it's just the bones ride. and skin, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's a young dragon too. So it's probably not a lot of bone at all. Mm. So oh, yeah, bless. and uh, that, that's I liked how they did that. I liked how they did it. They didn't overlap the time. It's both chronological, but the story is mirrored. Or, and and that's yeah. that's really clever. I I'm very yeah. Uh, so but, what's interesting because is, I got I got thrown off in the first shot because they had the previously mm. on and I was like, oh, they're going to echo shots of this empty abandoned castle as they find out about things and it was a previously on. Um, and I, I I I lost my my pride in my thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's what, right, what but it, I, it would it would take. They showed the reaction. They showed right. They showed the reaction to the news because the news yeah. had to take time to arrive. And yeah. Rainey's was the one that delivered it, right? Wasn't? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So, w- what I what I think is 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 an interesting possibility is uh, with uh, the way that it's set up right now. Rhaenyra is seen as the good guy, and Alicent is seen as as the bad guy. Uh, yeah. But we know, for example, uh, that Rhaenyra's kind of going to go uh, a bit more aggressive. Her in, blood. In, yeah. Oh, yeah. The first, the first, because like, she said she wouldn't strike first. And I think this is the indication. That yeah, she's, so she's like, I'm as not going to start it, as nothing. Much as it, all right, as much as, it, as much as it was an accident, as they're going to probably say, they started it. So, yeah, she's going to finish it because that's what she wanted to so, do so yeah it'd be interesting to see if there's um any kind of i i don't i don't know if 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 it can be u-turned but whether or not this goodwill that seems to be being uh sort of generated for for Rhaenyra in terms of like even in the later end of the season where she's talking about refraining from war um yeah and, and, and all the other stuff and, and like being a a, a like a kind and attentive mother who you know she genuinely cares for her children um mm. and and oh, and I, is sympathetic I... to Lenor as well like she 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 presents she is presented as a uh as a as a good character who that 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 could um that could I've got uh, the th- my my theory change. is in the same way that L- Laris has been the devil on Alicent's shoulder i think Damon 
is going to be the devil on Rhaenyra's shoulder. I think he's going to do things that she's going to yeah. concede to again and again and again until it's just as it is because she's angry and grieving. I think he's going to do things that she will say, you shouldn't have done that, but also subconsciously at the very least be like, yes, I did want that. I think he's going to do bad shit in her name because he wants to do bad shit anyway. And people can be manipulated pretty easily when they're they're grief-stricken and angry, you know? Can can Laris do it? Like, Like, at the end of the day, though... He's ju- like he is just an arsonist. Like, has he done anything that's and not a arson and feet? Person, I mean. Feet and arson. That's his two things. You know, like it's clever to begin with, but uh, w- once you kind of have seen how the sausage is made, you know, you've got dragons. They're much better at lighting things on fire than Laris. They are, but he's but he's not controlling the dragons. He's controlling the people. You know, and if he can. Well, he's controlling the arsonists. They're, they're like dragons, dragons, but they just like scuttle on the floor. It's not yeah. how many dragons you have and the size of the dragon. It's <laughs> use the dragon. So I'd, I'd be interesting to see if Laris has a few tricks up his sleeves or something like that, I guess. He probably does. He's, he I, just wants I, those feet, you know? All for the... That, what a daft motivate. Like, can he be motivated by something? <laughs> this, you know? Like, I, and I get, I get that it's supposed to be like, oh, it's a power thing. But, like, even still, do you know what I mean? Like... I wonder what that says about what Laris is. It, 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 like, yeah. he's not doing, he's not murdering his own family for feet. Come on, like, that's just silly. It's, it's just, Maybe it's like, a front for something else. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, like, I mean, th- there is one theory I've heard that it's, he's not actually that into feet, but he loves making people really uncomfortable so he can kind of grind them down to their lowest common denominator and, what better way to make Alison uncomfortable there you go. to to do that? Like this this pious queen who is clearly never actually had a sexual awakening, um, has zero imagination. Um, how how best to bring her down to the lowest common denomination is to like not only stand against every time she goes. No, we don't. I don't want you to kill people. Oh no no slowly grind her down into um saying yes i want people murdered yes i want this to happen and then also lowering her morally and like just making her disgusted yeah like it's petty but i'd say that's less petty than just liking feet like it, it, if, if his play is to make people feel disquieted and vulnerable then getting her barefoot and like conceding mm. is 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 quite yeah. an effective power play for him like he he's the one with the power in that situation like mm, yeah uh, i mean that's i, I mean that's, it, the, that's, that's one interpretation really. which makes it a bit less just naff i uh, yeah i mean the, i think the only redeeming thing for it for me would be if it turned out to be a red herring which it might be and he's got oh, some I. other motivation i just want i just want a, a serious like even even bringing um, people in a like so I talked last week about Locke in um, ga- in in Game of Thrones I think that was on the the podcast where like his motivation and his actions lined up in an interesting way uh, Locke just fundamentally hated rich people because I mean you could say maybe there's some some jealousy there or maybe you could just say that he doesn't like the injustice or however that he chooses to express that and he does outlandish things like chops off jamie's hand and the rest you know torments him basically and that it makes a lot of sense he is he is humiliating powerful people because he almost sees it as the tables turning in a you know in 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 a some short moments and and you, I suppose you could you could apply that to Laris, but um, but yeah, but I, I mean, watch 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 the rich burn a little bit, you know. That's yeah, but also maybe. like yeah, um, I guess I I don't know. I'd like to see more, like not like more like, m- like more feet. Y- no more. <laughs> 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 like, you, you you would you would like to see more depth and more interest and some so, something more yeah. justified than just feet, yeah. Uh, or or yeah, even just you. just 
superficial power play um you know like something a bit more material i guess like like can you can you ask for a castle or can you but then he doesn't care about legacy so he probably doesn't care about a castle i mean what like, i want the guy to care about something that's all is it is there an, is he just a nihilist is he like yeah, the Joker? he just wants to watch the world burn and Maybe. wants to mess mess with people but that doesn't make sense sense right does it <laughs> maybe he really, maybe maybe he'd be really into um helena and aegon's kids because they have uh, six toes on, on their feet so maybe that's his <laughs> <little> <laughs> that's he's what's looking what's for a kid feet what if he's no, into kid no, feet there's a couple oh, of God. podcasts ago where i was like you know what? Isn't it weird that there's less Targaryen birth defects, like given the amount of incest? Yeah, I thought about like, that too. Like, and come so on, we man. We finally had some Targaryen um, birth defects. Cousins other than, like, and sisters having kids. Like, uh, kids having kids. Like, yeah. Ugh. Brothers like, and sisters. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah, Aegon and Helena's kids, I think they both have six toes. On each so foot, and and yeah. the son and the boy has six fingers on one of his hands or something. Yeah, well, that's in the why... book. I feel like there should be more problems than that. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, the the question is, are there problems in the way that like some of them are psychotic? So the Targaryens are completely and utterly crazy, and some of them have horrendous birth defects because, like, you know, their dragon, their babies come out all scaly and dragon-like mm. and twisted. The only time um, will tell, right? Like, so there, there are Targaryen birth effects, but having like classic relatable, or as close to relatable as possible, like our world style birth effects with web feet and all of that, that, that seems relatively rare. So it's kind of nice. Uh, it's nice that their sigil on the, on the blood um, chart is six fingers, six toes. Did you guys see that? <laughs> no. Is yeah, it? Like, yeah, that, that that's their sigil for the, the for the for the siblings. Is they they they, they have a <laughs> crossed a, a pair of hands with six fingers. Oh god. <laughs> um, both the both of them are identical on that one. They both have the same. I, I think. My name is Anigia Montoya. <laughs> <laughs> you killed my dragon. Now prepare to die. <laughs> I'm prepared to die. Um. Yeah. So it's it's it, it's nice to have some. Well, not nice because incest, but. Um, you know, it, it 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 is something that I was slightly confused about the fact that so far the Targaryens seem to be free of the classic birth defects. Um, so at least they're yeah. they're doing some birth defect representation. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, did, did um yeah, and uh, did did you say uh, doesn't does Jaharis have six toes? Jaharis, Jaharis, and Jahara. Ja- ja- yeah. Ja- 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 yeah, Jah- Harris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not confusing at all. Lexi's <laughs> nightmare. There, there's Jacaris who who just flew off to the Erie in Winterfell. Um, right. But oh, there's he... J- but Jaharis is the son of uh, Aegon and Helena and the twin of Jahara. Jaharis and Jaharis. Oh no, I meant, I'm, and, I mean... he, and he's the great grandson of King Jaharis. That's the one, Jaharis. Yeah, the guy at the very Someone beginning. Someone needs to make a tongue Jaharis twister after Targaryen. all of these names. So somebody probably has. There this needs to be like a great, the great Targaryen grandson. names are uh, like Just a Google horrifying it. Somebody rap. Yeah, yeah. And it, the the old guy, the very the very old guy, King Jaharis, Jaharis the first <laughs> of his name. Uh, like that. Yeah, he, I, I think I might have heard somewhere that he has uh, an extra finger or toe or something. It's amazing that we've come completely full circle now with the na- with at least one name. <laughs> 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 or two. Uh, we got Viserys. Oh, yeah, we got Viserys, Viserys as well. We've got Aegon, Ag- Aegon, Aegon, and Aegon. Yep. I'm Damon. Um, <laughs> and, uh, anyway. Um, yeah. How many Balons uh, have we got? Oh, we've got a Baylor, a Balon. Uh, well, there's, there was... A- Balon is dead, but oh. was married to Alyssa. And then we have Balon that was... One of Viserys' kids that's dead. There's gonna be a Baylor yep. eventually. They should try and invent some new names. Yeah. The dragon. Mm. Joffrey uh, is the one with the most different sounding name. Yeah. Well, yeah. Joffrey, well, they, uh, made, they made a point of that, that it, it wasn't a very Targaryen sounding name because it Definitely was named not. after uh, Lucere. Uh, Lu- 
What's it called? Uh, Lainor's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, ironically, I suspect um, Joffrey um, obviously has okay enough standing to probably be the namesake of Joffrey from the Game of Thrones series. Or well, the Game of Thrones mm. timeline proper. So mm. he, he must have, or, or it's a common enough name. It's either a common name or it's a name enough that Cersei, who was choosing the name of her child, decided to name them after a historical prince who, at the moment, hasn't really done anything of note. He is like six, but you know. Little boy. Well, well now he's there to drift mark. I suppose if you're a history, I was going to say a history buff, but to be fair, someone like Cersei would probably have had a reasonably comprehensive history education on family lines. And well, Joffrey, she, she was a fine lady, so she would have read about knights and lords and mm, So kings. Joffrey Valerion is a non-Targaryen royal name. So I suppose yeah. if you were... If you were looking for, uh, if you were having a child with the expectation that he would become king, then Joffrey is probably literally the closest non-Targaryen Valerian name. Uh, yeah, well, it's, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's probably the most you know, legitimately name. royal non-Valerian name. Yeah, mm. she would have specifically avoided calling her son a Valerian name because. Um, of, Robert thing, yeah. hated the Kargarian so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, it makes sense. And there's a good chance that, like, um, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, King Robert would, would might not have known Joffrey Valerion. Like, like educated like some people might have. Like, for example, Shireen would know who Joffrey Valerion is. But, like, Robert was probably, you know... Drinking and whoring. Yeah, like he was out, or probably at that age, more like skipping school to hit stuff with a stick, right? But like, (laughs) you know, he he, he was not known for his intelligence. He was known for his uh, prowess as a fighter. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see... um, I'm now living in doubt of whether or not any of these children will survive, because war hath arrived, um, and we know the Targaryens are decimated in some shape or form and the dragons are definitely depleted if not lost at some point during this conflict because we know that from the future timeline that there are not dragons and there are very 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 few targaryens um so when it comes to those factors it'll be interesting to see whether or not prince joffrey actually does anything or whether or not he's just a prince who existed who had a name yeah, <laughs> the prince who existed. <laughs> and lots, and had a, a name. Yeah, like and you, you will meet a man, and he will have hair. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> what did this guy? Oh, oh, he existed young, and he, he had hair and a good yeah, name. Had, that was it. And the name. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't win these the lottery. Are that, these are things that are factu- factually true <laughs> and could be factually true of most things. Well, look how many people are dead already. <laughs> <laughs> Before the war even started. Yeah, we'll set, we'll set the bar real low. Oh. Um, right, uh, I've got a couple more things if, if you guys want me to Go reel through it. my list of yeah, things that I made while we're chatting. Um, so, did Rhaenys ever actually bend the knee to... Oh, I don't know. I don't think she did. So, one, one of the things that they've, they've held true so far, at least between this episode and last episode, is... Um, they're, they're holding true to some form of traditional, um, uh, co- uh, you know, gentlemanly conduct in that um, if, if you, you will not be called an oath breaker if you swear allegiance to um, one side or the other, unless you then backtrack. Right. Um, so I think Rainey's might be hedging her bets. We have, we just have, I, unless I missed it, I don't think we saw her bend the knee. So I think she's still she holding on to the she ability didn't. to choose her path at a later date, if needs be, um, dependent on what happens. Oh, I um, think you're I think doing her dirty. Goes, I, I, I don't know. I, like, I think I, I'm not doing her dirty because I think it's, you know, strategically smart to not necessarily hitch your horse to the first, the first, hitch your cart to the first horse. Um, like, 
you know, I think her her main prerogative was, can we have peace? Can we have peace? Can we have peace? Now, that's unlikely to happen now that one of the children has been killed. Um, mm. But I think she was hoping that she wouldn't necessarily have to choose a side. Um, uh, well, was I, I think, right in, in thinking that um, perhaps the reason she didn't kneel was because she hadn't discussed it with Corliss? Corliss. Yeah. And Corliss yeah. did bend the knee. Corliss did say, you have our loyalty. So I don't know whether or not she's taking him as a sign of her, her dedication, mm. but I don't physically think I saw her bend the knee. And she so did not I bend the knee, know. no. Uh, she but did, but also... she said that they, but she said after talking to Corliss right at the table scene, that she was going to use her dragon to assist them, and Corliss said he would. Well, yeah. It, could it be... Uh, side, I, side. Could it be that, like, for someone of her seniority, uh, she basically gets a pass? Because she she's basically the... Sh- almost like the, the, the grandmother the of the Targaryens. Bend the knee. When, when, when Rhaenyra got given the crown, everyone bent mm-hmm. the knee to her, including Daemon... Um, except for Rhaenys. And that, that, I don't know, it felt significant to me. It, I, it could mean nothing, yeah. but it was just one of those things that like, they drew attention to the fact that every single other person at that, the baby funeral slash the crowning and the yeah. knee, except her. Um, so it might be that she was waiting for Corliss. It might be that she hadn't chosen yet. I don't know, but it, it, the fact that they drew attention to it felt significant. And I don't know whether or not that's going to have a full bout um, particularly mm. if uh, Rhaenys is going for peace and Rhaenyra is going for wrath in the next season. Yeah. No. Yeah, I... I it's um, meant to like make them feel like they're a little more on equal ground than everybody. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, there's a few ways it can be interpreted and I don't entirely know which is the the best way is and whether or not it's designed to be a little bit ambiguous because it doesn't seem like a disre- dis- disrespectful or defiant no, uh, Stan. Yeah. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it could like maybe maybe your knees are getting a bit much, and she, she's just, <laughs> just a soft curve. Oh, long health health right. <laughs> you know? And and maybe because of her age, or not because of her age, because of her her state, you know, status as a sort of her seniority. Like, seniority is a, like a pseudo yeah. grandmother, right? Like yeah. not necessarily grandmother, but like a, a great aunt, or she's got that kind of thing that it's like, you know. People trust people at the very least trust her to be upfront about her intentions and to not be underhanded. So maybe she kind of yeah. I like, think she has a reputation for honesty, which is refreshing. Her her general status probably affords her the privilege not to have to kneel, providing she's not being a dick about it, right? <laughs> you know, put yeah. like defiant um, or like angry or you know. Talking of uh, loyalty. There was a scene where Damon took um, Jace to um, uh, test the um, Kingsguard's loyalty to Rhaenyra with the dragons. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he said it was, um, he wanted it to show him what real loyalty is. Um, but instead of showing them what real loyalty is, he kind of showed them how to threaten someone into submission. Right, that so, was not real I, loyalty at all. There was an outside force yeah, that was forcing them to... Exactly. So, you want to get torched, or you want to be on our side? I, you know, it's like... I, ironically, real loyalty would have been if they said, um, actually, we think Aegon should be king. Um, kill us. Um, that yeah. would have been... That would have been the way to show true loyalty. I don't know whether or not Damon was... I think Damon was basically pitching for a fight because he was angry and has no emotional control um, and was really hoping that either of those guys would flip so he could invoke I suppose, violence. I suppose to Damon, from Damon's point of view and to, you know, in, in line with Damon's uh, values, uh, loyalty probably does derive itself from a degree of, of fear. Like, even when he was uh, with the, the gold cloaks, you know, we don't, we don't know to what degree... He whipped them into shape with a bit of, uh, you know, drill Horse. sergeant mentality, right? Uh, and yeah. dragon. Well, I guess. I, I guess. I mean, that's I fear. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Right. It was just something that um, it was interesting to me that it, it felt ironic that he was describing it as how to show real loyalty, mm. um, when actually what he was asking was, um, are you going to die or are you going to reassert? 
something that I can't prove to be true because there's a threat of death. Like, it, you know, it's, it's right. like um, confession under duress. Yeah. Like, exactly. It's like back the person to a corner and then give them two options instead of letting them actually choose with no outside manipulation um, or force. But I mean, then, obviously, then... it, needed, it needed doing to see if the King's Guard would remain loyal to Rhaenyra, but if I was the King's Guard, I'd go, the psycho just threatened my life. Um, maybe I should go to the side that doesn't have mm-hmm. dragons that have just been threatened to kill me. I don't know. I, I, I feel like it might be one of those um, dragons used for personal gain that might cause conflict later, in the same yeah. way yeah. that um, Rainey's killing some peasants. It's fine for the moment, but might cause problems down the road. Yeah, well, I, I think with, with Damon, he he is one of those people that thinks that Aegon the Conqueror won because of dragons and that he did everything he could because of dragons. Like, to Damon, all power comes from the dragons as in terms of as a show of force. Right. Uh, That's you what know, people aren't going to be... Yeah. L- People aren't gonna gonna bow, bend the knee because they think you're a nice guy, or because, or even because they think you're like the best ruler or king or whatever. It's always going to be a show of force with him, and I, you know, that extends to to loyalty as well, I suppose, right? And and that's where he contrasts with Rhaenyra in that Rhaenyra is a um, she she, she doesn't An empathetic see... ruler. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't see force as the be all and end all, and and the first, um, the first tool in the box to use, right? right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the and I, I think it might be interesting again. Her, her, I feel like you'll be a brilliant little devil on her shoulder, and mm. I, I'm kind of interested yeah. to see how far he can push it before she realizes how far she's gone. Because again, she's she's in a state of grief. No one knows what she will do yeah. in this this circumstance. Mm. Yeah, it's like Otto and Allison, sort of. Just to get angry, you get manipulated. Usually yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, right, uh, a super quick couple of um, super quick mm. ones. Um, so one, the standoff on the bridge was almost shot for shot, like the standoff on the bridge where she saves Otto from being killed by Damon, um, yeah. and she yet again saves Otto from yeah. being killed by Damon because Damon would have just killed him. Yep. Um, and it's shot for shot, except older and more world weary and um she's on damon's side rather than being against him um so that, that was it was just one of those nice visual callbacks um there was also one of the interesting things that if, if there we've talked about how there's sometimes a theme for the episode mm-hmm. and there was a lot going on in this episode so i don't think there was a very clear theme but one of the things i did notice was um there seems to be a thing about like men abandoning their women in times of stress um, so Damon didn't mm-hmm. come and see Rhaenyra until after the baby had died. Right. Um, and there there was the point in the episode where they got married, where mm. she, she, he talks about men being depraved, and she responds that, like, I know you're capable of depravity because you basically abandoned me. Mm-hmm. Like, you made me fall in love with you and then abandoned me. And yep. so her impression of depravity is abandonment. And he wasn't there when she was having a baby. He was there trying to push for war while she mm-hmm. was screaming and calling for him. Um, mm. So I, I, I don't know. It just it it, it seems like a, to highlight the toxicity of some aspects of their relationship. Um, and then obviously Corliss did the same thing to yep. Rainey's, where at the point where she was deeply grieving, he effed off to go and you know make money and do ship adventures and nearly died. Um, so I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a theme I notice, particularly with those two relationships where the man abandons at the point where things get tricky in the same way that Lenor was like, when, when, when a storm is coming, the smart, um, person runs away or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Either I, sails I don't know. into it I, or I sails just, away. Uh, so that, that's what Corliss says, but Lenor mm. says like, you, you run away. <laughs> <laughs> I think Call it says you either face up to it or go round. And Lane so, Orton yeah. uses a similar analogy to be like, no, you run away, you leave. Um, which is interesting as a father and son dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Um, and my last one mm. is, I don't think it was mentioned in the story, but I think Rhaenyra's um, stillbirth child was going to be called Visenya. Uh-huh. Which makes sense because she was going to call baby Aegon her brother by 
Emma, she named her Visenya. It was a name she'd mm-hmm. chosen for what she thought was going to be the uh, a little sister to her back when she was mm-hmm. 15, because um, mm-hmm. they weren't sure of the gender of the baby. Um, so I can we can assume that if she'd had a healthy baby girl, she would have called her Visenya, being the first girl that she would have yep. had. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the bit of paper that Otto brought to her that was torn out was when Alicent and Ramira were reading about Visenya yep. underneath the thing. So, like, I think that's part of that emotional moment is not just Alicent remembered, it's Alicent remembered and I've just lost my child who would have been called Visenya. Um, that was the, like, plea for peace. That she yeah, made. so the, the plea for peace was, like, remember yeah. our relationship we had as a child and how you were breaking the rules but i remember still and i kept that page because because it still meant something to me all this time um which is a really like clever emotive manipulative tactic from uh, alison whether genuine or other mm. um i feel like it didn't seem like alison had much in a say of what actually the terms that otto brought but that was a good compelling um mm. a bit of evidence to like um being genuine in her pitch towards peace right. um but it was very interesting that I, w- I wonder if Alison had made that assumption that mm. if Amira was having a girl that she would have called her Senya because obviously at this point Alison doesn't know that she's still birthed um mm. but would have still thought like for your family for your baby let's go for peace mm. And so that might have been part of the reason why for a minute it seemed like Ramira would have gone for peace because message was you've lost your baby but i remember mm-hmm. anyway i just I, I thought it was a really a, a good callback that had deeper meaning in the context of having just lost a child yeah anyway um mm-hmm. that that's all of it i just also wanted to comment on the costumes being awesome and the fact that mm-hmm. ramir and damon totally like match their outfits on a couple of points they were like the same structure just a gendered and power couple moves and super super, super totally awesome oh, and really cute and awesome Targaryen and i loved it couple. Yeah. Um, also, the one thing that I found really weird, which kind of reminded me just a little bit of when they depicted um, Sansa's first period being like the bloodiest explosion of all time. Um, the fact yeah. that Rhaenyra's in pain and then just reaches under her skirt to see what's going on. Like, they obviously changed the angle, but how that would have looked would have been her literally reaching up her skirt <laughs> and seeing what was going on. And like, no one would do that in a public setting. Even if mm. they thought that they were in the process of miscarrying, like yeah. they could have had like a shot of her looking down at her foot and seeing blood, or mm. I've got to go why for do you a think minute. She and didn't go want, into why room. do you think she didn't want any help? Because the last time, Ray, they helped her. Um, I think it maybe because she she could tell something. Like the thing is, it was a premature birth. Right. No matter what, it was a premature birth. So I think because she knew that it was going to be a dangerous and unsafe labor, she mm-hmm. didn't want. Um, anyone interfering because she feared what would happen with her mother yeah mid female midwife or not yeah um and the other thing i think as well is that it was a metaphor about her feeling like she needed to stand alone in life mm. or at least stand alone with the, the she she just she just become the queen she's alone um you know she is now above all else um i can take it on and she 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 needs to stand on her own she needs to be on her own mm-hmm. even going through that situation. I don't know like it, uh, the, the emotional like state of someone who's going through a premature possibly stillbirth after hearing that her father had died and her best friend had just entirely boycotted her birthright um I I th- those are the two leading theories I have mm. um is fear of what happened to her mother and um feeling like she needs to be herself but she did she was calling out for damon she wanted damon mm. to help her or to be there with her um yeah. but she didn't necessarily mm. want help from the servants um no. but yeah I, I, I think it was possibly her. she she knew it had gone wrong mm. um and it was going to be a bad time and she didn't want them to take it into their own hands of oh we cut the baby out or some some such mm. yeah well yeah she i mean there were indications in the run-up to that scene yeah where it was like um so yeah Good episode. Very sad. Mm. Yeah. In, 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 do you have any? When are we? Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Do Do we have any thought? Like any any expectations as of yet for a season two? Anything you sort of you 
I don't know, hoping to see or just war uh, battles. Yeah, I, you know, I'd, I'd like to Definitely. see a good battle with war coming up. I think uh, that's. I think that's pretty much guaranteed yeah. at this point. I, I, hope, I hope it doesn't all go battle. too quickly because the thing is, now that it's kind of it's revved up, revved up, revved, revved up, revved up. I, I hope it doesn't just turn into just pure war. Like obviously, this mm. is, it, 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 it's a double one because if if there maybe was a complaint, which is not me personally, but I think some other people might have, might find this ser- season a bit slow and a bit pacing in place which i thought built great tension personally um but i don't want to then lose that tension and lose the intrigue and the political machinations because it's war and everyone's pissed off at each other and scared because i that that's i hope that's not the direction they go i hope they can keep some of the intrigue um as well as obviously amping it up for actual yeah. combat and other things but i don't want them to just i don't want them to neglect the things that are interesting politically for the sake of you know chips at the fan let's fight an issue yeah, yeah. I hope so um so i'm hoping mm-hmm. that's not an expectation that comes through mm. um i i would like to see a battle that doesn't have dragons in i got to admit mm. Hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of dragons as a whole. Uh, when it came to Game of Thrones, I was much more interested in the direwolves than the dragons. Um, Are you aware I, you're watching a show called House of the Dragon? Yeah, I uh, <laughs> yeah. And but I, you know, I mean, I get that they symbolise weapons of mass destruction, and that that's that is kind of interesting. And I'm sure they'll take it to some great places. But uh, like, I hope that. Like, I hope that just doesn't become what what it's all about is the dragon fights. You know, like I'd like yeah. to see troops on the ground. I like to see strategy. I like to see interesting dynamics. People using the land to their advantage. You know, that's that. I, I always thought Game of Thrones did did battles in a really interesting way, um, where each battle was different because it had a different layout, different motivations, different types of army with different equipment, and they dropped the ball. I think in the 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 season eight when it came to battles i feel that they 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 could have done more to have made them but well you still i, I mean i can still remember a fair amount of the long the battle of the long night and the bells um so yeah you know. i i feel like i i i'm hoping that now that war has started they don't just go for spectacle over meaning exactly because th- this yeah. th- this season was a lot of meaning with not that much spectacle there was some but it wasn't the focus i'm really hoping they don't just go oh well it's war now let's just do big spectacle because that was one of the most painful things about the last season of game of thrones was mm-hmm. um you guys want ba- um uh cocaine bowl cocaine bowl uh, looks like the side of a, a van that someone painted with you know mm-hmm. knights fighting over a city on fire and mm. all that it just i i hope I really, really hope they've learned that lesson and they don't go in that direction because that would ruin my interest quite significantly if it just becomes mm. the spectacle show. Yeah. 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 Although one thing about Clear Game Bowl is, as much as I was uh, uh, left unenthused, the visuals of it were beautiful. I think the visuals were beautiful, but they did also throw me off that they felt like 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 a, a, a rock stars t-shirt. Like it, 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 it was an aesthetic, and it was aesthetically pleasing. Um, but it, it just, it, it, it felt like fantasy does fight. It didn't feel like this is an actual really built emotional moment between these two characters. Mm. One of them's a zombie who ain't got no emotions anyway. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think in st- story speaking, like I, I liked the the heavy metal vibe that it had, uh, but um, yeah. The, the thing I, I, that, I can appreciate it for what it was, but I don't want to see that in Hot D. Yeah, I. The thing is, I, I I don't think the story should have took it there. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it 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 was like it would have been nice to have subverted expectations and to have real and and for the hound to have realised that. Well, the hound did realise that um, that his his quest for for revenge was really useless and. But he he said, yeah, but I've got I've got a contractual obligation to do uh, this Gamble. fight, so you know, so yeah, so I I I hope I hope that 
Uh, here, here, here we are being like, I hope it's not bad. I hope, I hope Hot D is not bad. Season two. Well, I'm like, you know, that's how I felt like at the beginning of Hot D, and I've been genuinely excited every single episode. So I, I I'm gonna tentatively put faith in the showrunners. Um, what, what's, what sort of thing do you want to see? We keep saying things we don't want to see. What, what sort of thing do you want to see? Just good battles, yeah. really. Um, yeah. And, and complexity. Like at this point, I, I don't have much in the way of expectations at all uh, because i but i do trust the show to be good i think that I, I i i made no bones about it that i was i was legit expecting good things from hot d even though people laughed they laughed at me they did they go ha 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 after, after how they got rid after how they closed off game of thrones for season eight you're going to be stupid enough to get back on that horse <laughs> I, um, I will admit to being one of those gremlins <laughs> And, but I, 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 I can't be seeing the screen captain being like, nope, cast that Smith, what? Nope. And I think, I think Dan and Dave were very much, I think the blame, the, 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 the Game of Thrones yeah. fan community definitely put the blame squarely on those two. And I think that was justified. And I think getting rid of them fixed a lot of the problems. A lot. A lot of the problems. Can you imagine that they were going to do a show about the confederacy that would have been terrible yeah and, well I'm, uh, just, I'm just picturing the 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 D, D version of hot d and i think they would have taken out basically they would have done it how george rr R. kind of implied that a lot of the characters were where um rain mirror is just kind of a bit of a like warmongering slut uh with no real motivation other than she's a bit of a whore um, mm. And um, they probably would have made Alison, like Alison's a violent, like aggressive woman who, like at the point where um, she's putting Aegon, uh, Aemond up for the throne, she says something along the lines of like, I hope Romira dies in childbirth. Like, you know, maybe, maybe the whore will die in childbirth um, is like a thing that Alison is said to have said in the books. And like, that character would have been far less interesting um, than what we got. And I think D&D probably would have, if they were to do Game of Thrones, probably would have written them as those less interesting characters. Mm. I mean, uh, for I sure. Know. And I, mean, I think... I, 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 I also think that... I mean, we could, we could in theory... Like, some of the... Like, I believe some of the showrunners' self-criticism was making Damon too likable. Like, they... But, but in many ways, like, Dan and Dave... Would have, I think they would have gone all the way in on making Damon the likable, complicated, Bad. fixable man. And I think that would have been really problematic. Yeah, I think that would have been... It would have made him the Jamie Lannister yeah. of yeah. the show. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, and I'm, I'm genuinely happy that you were, you were right and I was wrong, Chris. <laughs> I, I well, genuinely... I, 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 saw, I, I, I saw the screen chats, I was looking at the costumes, and I was like, nah... Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crap, um, and I've I've really enjoyed it. I I was I was foolish to pin my hopes on it. I I will grant that because a lot of people were saying I'm going to expect it to be rubbish, and if it turns out to be good, I'll be pleasantly surprised. But I just I just I had a, a gut a gut feeling, and my gut is frequently wrong. So again, not <laughs> you know like I was I was, but yeah, like you know from what I read, from what I you know I I, I believe that there were enough good knowledgeable people on that show to learn from the mistakes and they have and if they bring in and i i genuinely reckon in season two we're going to see some levity some comic relief uh i okay. i think i think they they will have learned from that slight omission they, they need to bring mushroom in and mm, yeah take him seriously as a character i'm kind of that's my one note about this season that i'm disappointed is that they showed mushroom in the background i guess one scene but yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice to have a proper book. Like a wise fool, which seems to be the archetype the mushroom is in the in the book, because he's one of the um, perspectives. I think having that wise fool who can kind of look at things in an abstract way and actually find the humour, I think, I think when we've talked about this before, I've said it, it's kind of hard for these characters who are so invested and so serious and so like you know it affects their life and their family it's very hard for them to be the ones to make witty commentary because they're too busy being 
angsty and stressed and depressed and invested. Mm. Um, so it'll be good to have a outside perspective who can actually um, mm -hmm. put some put some fun back on the plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, but it, I think it's good that the the biggest criticisms on the whole are things that they've left out, not things that they've put in that they shouldn't have. Right? Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm nice. so impressed. I'm, I'm yeah. honestly, the series has has shot right up into my probably top five series that I've seen, maybe even top three. Uh, of, 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 of ever of ever of ever christ oh, wow. high praise indeed mm. i mean it's probably t it's probably breaks top 10 relatively easily I mean, for, me, uh, for me i love mm. shows which um that there is like if, if you can enjoy the content in front of you but also there is a deeper meaning which you can read into and i feel like this has packed that nut um and it's mm. also it's visually pleasing artistically pleasing well acted well directed well written um, well, like it, from a production standpoint, mm. it's up there anyway. Um, but then you have to add in the fact that, like, it feels like they know where they're going. It feels like they know what they're doing. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, I do, I'm just really impressed. Um, yeah, makes it's discussed deep and troubling issues in a in a um, in a a way that I feel is a good balance between serious um like moralistic tones and also um a certain level of you know you choose who's right in this circumstance I like yeah. that sort of challenge yeah um also I like that sort of challenge wrapped up in a lovely fantasy bow yeah yeah in an engaging uh you know fleshed out world as well yeah. I feel um, that this series is designed to be talked about in the way that we talk about it. Like it's, mm. I think they layer things deliberately, and I think sometimes maybe you can all that that is almost approaching a fault. You know, when they've got things that are just a little bit too open to interpretation. But I guess that's kind mm. of part of the fun, really. So it's not that's not really criticism. That's really more of a compliment. But like. Sometimes I yeah. I don't know. It just feels like they're leaning into it a lot. But you know, I mean, that's what we're here for. So should I really complain? Well, I, I feel like that's another lesson learned in comparison to D and D because D and D, you got the impression, particularly towards the last couple of seasons, that they were very much anti fan theory. Like if, mm. if fans have a theory, um, we'll do the fan service version of it, or we will completely and utterly mess with expectations so that we can be edgy and unexpected. Mm. Um, either it's fan theory that we think is cool and we think will get us bubbles yeah or um we'll show those redditors be, yeah we'll show those redditors <laughs> and so it, it doesn't feel like this show has that attitude i feel like this show is like if we see it enough so like eggs if some people if people read into it that's awesome that's great mm. we're doing something right um because they have that freezing where the story that they're based on is a bit more kind of um, non-specific and plays with the idea of the unobjective observer. Like they can kind of tell their own story without being disloyal. Mm. That's great. I love it. Anyway, I feel like I've been talking way, 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 way too much today. Not again, at as all, always. not at all. Um, yeah. No, I think, I think, I think you've, you've nailed it. <laughs> I, think, I think you guys have nailed it. Honestly, this has been a delight actually be able to hang out with you guys and talk about this because I know, this is sort of show where, you know it's this kind of show you think about on your days off and you're just like oh if I, if I want to talk about this with someone mm -hmm. um so it's nice to have people to talk about it with honestly it's, it's a pleasure so, like, so I've got, i think i think we're going to ask matt because this is this is like sometimes <laughs> i i forget that matt has not seen game of thrones i haven't and oh, so dang. i've got that too so how how have you found just in a nutshell uh the show the show like have you have you managed to find it easy enough to understand the world yeah you, i know that context the books, would, haven't you it would def i know i haven't i haven't read anything you haven't i i definitely um see how the context would help like knowing more of the universe and stuff in the first series but it's really interesting to like see this first and place it at the beginning of the timeline and think about like how this sets into motion the stuff that happens later on because it's been fun to sort of like get teasers for what you guys have been saying from game of thrones mm -hmm. it's been really fun to like hear bits of that but not hear the full story that's kind of like motivating me to want to watch nope 
and what? to watch the rest of it. Um, I, I I've enjoyed it. Though, having watched mm. this, I would not recommend you watch Game of Thrones anymore. No, I don't recommend Game of Thrones to people anymore. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just read the Cliff Note summary of it. <laughs> or, yeah, or maybe maybe read the book and then, you know, you can kind of visualize as needed. Um, yeah, because I, like, I do get some of that from... It's just cool. I like when I'm able to start at the beginning of the timeline, not have to hop mm. and try to, like, figure stuff out before or after. But it sounds, like, you're, it sounds like you think this is way better than Game of Thrones. I would say the failures of Game of Thrones, um, this has learned from graphically. Yeah. Um, I, I, think I will the, also say... The relationships in this one sound a, a bad, but they sound a lot more, more actually, structured yeah. and done <laughs> yeah, than Game of Thrones. Yeah. The, the only um, th- I, some of the areas I'm where Chris. I think Game of Thrones is a, is a bit more interesting is uh, I do think that Game of Thrones probably does have like more better characters but let's but we can wait until season two before that before we we um you know conclude that one right but also game of thrones shows more of the there's more diversity in geography yeah there's there's more places that you see up and down the seven kingdoms and it's a little bit more diverse in in scenery Uh, also a little bit more colorful as well like they've got the uh, essos which is you know bright and um I mean, parts of it are Mediterranean, parts of it are kind of like um, a bit more deserty, and then and then of course you've got like like the the Riverlands, and is that is that maybe like Englandy, whereas like the North might be more Scotlandy, uh, yeah. and then you've got Dawn. Dawn's Mediterranean. You'd say Dawn, Dawn's quite yeah Greek, oranges, Greek, lots uh, of orange trees. Spain, I'd go with. Yeah. So maybe Italian-y, you know. Um, so it's, yeah, like, it's nice. You've got, like, and and, and with Game of Thrones, uh, with uh, House of the Dragon, we really have just a small section of Westeros, or not a small section, but, like, a you know, a, a bit of Westeros. And I, I do feel that the scenes, they they can get, they can be a tad bit stale. You have less, because you have such, such less variety. Yeah. But really... Uh, the the like I'm literally like like looking for things to be yeah, a nitpicking, <laughs> very much nitpicking. I hope that with the Dance of Dragons we do see more of Westeros, but you know, I'm having a grand old time watching it, so no real complaints. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, I had a great time. It's fun no, to have to ran- talk about random it thought for you on the subject of Game of Thrones before we wrap up. Um, so there is an anime series called Full Metal Alchemist, um, and they started an adaptation um, from the manga to the anime before the manga was finished. Um, and they made an okay ending in the anime, and it was fine. And then uh, a couple of years later, they made a remake based on the accurate ending as per the manga, and it's infinitely better. Because Are you the talking setup about makes sense. Um, the regular series versus the Brotherhood series? Yeah, uh, yeah. I've seen um, them both. Yeah, would would you agree that the yes. The, the, the yes. So the, the the strange thing, so it is better. The strange thing about the Brotherhood series is um much quicker. What how much how much faster the beginning it's is so, so they can fit more later. It's so yeah. fast. So it's and um kind but of I like did Game like I did yeah, I did like a lot of the the latter half of the story though and Brotherhood was really really good. And brother and I watched all of it. So I feel like um, it's kind of akin to the Game of Thrones series in that the source material wasn't finished when they were trying to make the adaptation, so the adaptation really floundered at the end, but then they did a remake. So my question to you guys is, if they were to remake Game of Thrones, if George R. R. ever actually manages to finish it, um, but with the mentality of what's been learnt through House of the Dragon, hmm. what do you guys, would you guys watch that? Or would you think, eh, it's done... Um, do you think it would be worth remaking? Do you think it would be worth recast? Like, all of those sort of things, because obviously it's a hypothetical, it's never going to happen, but what if? Because mm. I think that would be great, because the setups and the payoffs would be... Mm-hmm. Anyway, it was, it was just a thought that crossed my brain. Mm. Cool. Good, good thought to chew on. And they're already making some other... I mean, they're doing the Jon Snow series. Does that take place I, in only Game of Thrones? Is that actually happening? That's been rumored for so long. I just I think, assumed it was a hoax. I don't know. I think it no, is, it was, uh, and and it was Kit Harrington's uh, people that that have, have presented the idea. But they're, they're, I think they they have recently shelved two prequel shows. Um, I think the I can't remember what they were that they shelved, but they were quite distant from 
the the you know the mainstream Game of Thrones plot line, uh, and they were getting a bit worried that you know straying too far away from recognizable stuff in Westeros is is gonna lose the interest of the casual viewer in a similar way to how Andor seems to be struggling to re- retain viewer figures because it's just mm. not really Star Wars. Like it's got Star Warsy bits in it, but. You know, and I quite enjoy it, but I can certainly see, like, if you're not a Star Wars fan, you might just sort of fade off. It's of like it. it's like too too extended away from Star Wars, yeah, to get enough of the regular viewer base. So it sounds to me like they're going to focus on the shows, like the Jon Snow show. Uh, that sounds that's, like um, is that like in the Game show. of Thrones timeline? Like, does it yeah. go before or after it? It will it be after... go after it, so it's completely unwritten. So it'll be entirely the showrunner's discretion. Oh. I I can't say I'm interested in, given that I wasn't that interested in Jon Snow as a character anyway. Um, I, I think uh, I, 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 I mean, I'd watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it just to hang out with you guys and talk about it. To be there honest, it I, I think it's got I think it's got legs. But they were basically they wanted recognizable characters, and also prequels are always a hard sell. I don't know why there are so many prequels, really, because a lot of people find yeah. it find it difficult to become that invested in something where they know how it's going to end yeah, the, the, yeah. there are exceptions to, to prequels but in, in reality you want to keep moving forward i guess you, know, yeah. you want new frontiers and, and 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 you want you want the the possibility that anything could happen so what so what would the next game of thrones be thing that's coming out was that snow series after the next house of the dragon season comes out probably no they probably haven't started working on that yet Mm. I don't think we well, have any precise timelines. Yeah, I mean they they had they had like four things in the pipeline, and usually with TV shows like this, they they shell that that yeah. so that they could shelve things that that they get a feeling for aren't going to work, right? right? You know, when when they put like four four or five shows in motion, they don't have they don't do so with the expectation that they're going to end up with four or five shows. They see which one gets the the intrigue you know see which one gets traction yeah see which one is is good and then run with the strongest ones so. and not everything can be a hit you know? well not everything can be a hit but you can't who's gonna who's gonna put down the money to make four or five game of thrones is at once yeah you know yeah that's not to say that the shelved ideas won't come back you know or you know uh, or they might not you know it's just yeah. who it knows what the future holds. where all the where all the support and investment goes in yeah. Mm. Oh. yeah, but I do suspect that we will be seeing a Game of Thrones multiverse because House of the Dragon seems point, to be doing. Yeah. It, it, House of the Dragon seems to be doing quite well. Maybe it wasn't quite the phenomena that Game of Thrones was, but what what is going to be right? Yeah, you know, you, it it's uh, it seems to me that it's as good as it needs to be to keep Game of Th- Game of Thrones alive and well. So, yeah, pretty off your run. Cool, cool. All right, well. Thank you, folks, for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure on this ten-week journey. <laughs> and uh, shout out to Stacy who couldn't be here, but we love you. Uh, oh, shout out to Stacy! I think shout out to Max who might have and Max who dipped out at some point. Yeah, I think he got eaten by a dragon. Uh, <laughs> he had to evacuate. Yeah. <laughs> is, um, is that the noise that dragons make when they eat people? The bloop bloop. <laughs> the sound of it going down the dragon's esophagus and landing mm. in their stomach. <laughs> and uh oh i don't think we had falcon that managed to join us for any but was she here for the the trailer um i don't know if they I were around I, I i haven't i haven't i haven't talked to them about this show at all i will oh. have to follow up yeah but uh well we've had g- good views on the podcast i'm quite happy that uh we've had a good number of people come in and join and hear our thoughts so thank you very much to everyone who joined us um we we don't we we uh, yeah I mean that's about as it is thank you you know I'm, <laughs> we're we're not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends or uh, or anything like that um, <laughs> no. we're sponsored by Lewis Anthony Lewis yeah, exactly Anthony business person yeah Lewis Anthony businessman is our our long time dedicated world sponsor <laughs> yeah. he is our patron <laughs> retrieve our patron <laughs> so yeah. Thank you, thank you, uh, Jenny and Matt. Uh, thank you, Stacy and Max, and everyone else in the just in general, just people in general. Thank <laughs> you, just general, just broad feelings of gratitude emanating 
across the world. Um, and uh, we'll see you uh, sometime, I guess, right? I don't know. We'll work something out. Right. Toodaloo. Bye. Toodles.